Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Mycidian Legend, an FFTCG podcast where I, Alex Scott, talk about my deck that I'm playing this week, and how my results went and how I can improve in the future. This week we're going to be talking about a mono water deck that I played, and I'm also going to be introducing a new segment to the show. So without further ado, let's get into it. The first thing we're going to talk about is this week's card highlight. So this week, the card highlight that I would like to do is on Susu Hisa, which is a spoiler for Opus 10. I'm really excited for this card because I love to play Earth, and I think that it's going to be uh, or have a really big impact. So first, let's go over the card. Susu Hisa is a 1 CP Earth Forward with 1000 power. It's category type 0, and its job is Leader of the Dominion Legions. The text reads... When your opponent's auto ability triggers, put Suzuhisa into the break zone. When you do so, draw two cards. This is a really good card. Earth really needed uh, some good card draw, and FFTCG has featured an ETB heavy meta for a long time now. So this card has got to be relevant. A couple of notes for playing this card. You're going to want to play him off of one backup rather than pitching for him so that he always uh, draws you a net positive amount of cards. So if you play him off backups, you've only lost one card from hand, which is him, and every time he draws, he'll replace himself and then draw you one additional card. So another important note is that there's actually not very much that's going to kill him and give your opponent value, which makes him very difficult to remove. So what I mean is any ETBs your opponent uses to remove him will actually just trigger him. Also, any summons your opponent's going to use will generally cost more than anything or than the one CP you paid for him. So even though he might not draw you cards, he's making your opponent discard cards uh, compared to the value that you got from him. So the exception would maybe be 4 CP Phoenix, but it's pretty niche. Uh, They might be able to do a play where the 4 CP Phoenix kills your Suzuhisa and then does its regular combo action. The thing that we have to watch out with this card is action abilities. So there's some action abilities that will be able to break this guy without having any sort of economical impact on your opponent. Some examples of that would be Roja, Montblanc, Alphano, Alhenelem, and 4CP Laswell. So there's some options spread out across a lot of decks and across some decks that we're seeing right now, particularly Mono Water, Mono Lightning, uh, Mono Wind, and Fire Ice. I still think that this is going to be worth uh, playing the card because he's just, he's going to draw you a lot of cards and a lot of matchups and you just have to be really careful on what boards you can play him on. I mean, he's card draw that can also deal damage because he's a forward and that's always great. So we also have some synergies within Earth, uh, particularly with Recursion. You can use Miner or Apururu or Minfilia, the new Ford Chantoto, to bring him back and play him again. You can also use the 4CP Phoenix Summon to recur him. One of the interesting interactions I think we might see with this card is the running of Zeromus the Condemner. So this is a 7CP summon EX burst. When you cast Zeromus the Condemner, you may add a forward with uh, the cost equal or less to the damage you've taken uh, to your hand from the break zone, and your opponent has to select a card uh, forward uh, with equal or less damage to, uh, to what you've taken, and then uh, break it. So this is really good because after you've taken one point of damage, Zeromus is already online and on an EX burst, it will bring a Zuzuhisa back to your hand uh, as long as uh, it's in the break zone. So I think that this is, is going to be a great card. We just have to watch out for some of the counters and we'll see how common the counters are in Opus 10 and, and whether or not he is viable. There is one note to, to think about, and that is that if you have a Zusu Hisa and your opponent does as well, that technically they would set each other in an infinite loop. This is because uh, they trigger 
uh, on each other's auto ability, but the check to go to the break zone actually happens at resolution, and because they keep will continuously trigger, uh, they'll never actually get the chance to go to the break zone. Um, so I don't. This hasn't been errated or acknowledged yet, and uh, as far as we know from the understanding of the rules, this is how it would happen. So I'm very interested to see what happens when the FAQ comes out for Opus 10. All right, so that's it for the card highlight, and we're going to move on to the next segment where I'm going to talk about uh, the deck list for this week. So it's time for On to the Deck List. All right, so looking at Mono Water, uh, we have a lot of different packages that are uh, contained in the deck. And I want to mention right off the bat that I wanted to play Mono Water Fusoya, but was unable to because I didn't want to make a video on the list that I had. Um, the list may have belonged to a certain Nationals player. Uh, Nationals is over now by the time this has come out, but uh, I still just wanted to kind of move on to a different list and try something else out. So I ended up going with uh, the three CP Cloud of Darkness uh, and Emperor Gestal, which you might remember from last week. I used that in my previous deck, uh, and I'm just really fond of the cards. So let's get into it. This is Mono Water Cloud of Octopus, uh, and it's featuring the Dark Cloud of Darkness from the um, most recent starter set. So the first package that we're going to look at is our draw package, and this is uh, a staple of Mono Water. So obviously you have your things like Layla Viking to draw cards, Porum lets you recur cards to your hand from the break zone, summon specifically, Cloud of Darkness uh, lets you pick a card that's been removed from the game by its ability and lets you draw that, Kukulain is a 4 CP summon that lets you draw a card uh, as well as reduce power, Brawn lets you search on an EX burst, and then Merrowweb and Gramps also make you draw. So this draw power is super important, it helps us uh, find backups which we'll talk about in a little bit. The deck also has a ton of removal, including uh, 5 CP Cloud of Darkness. We run 2 of the 3 CP and 1 of the 5 CP. Famfret, Leviathan 3 CP that reduces power. 4 CP Kukulain that reduces power. Nickel, Cagnazzo, Ultros, and Emperor Gestal. And this Emperor Gestal kind of helps uh, the void of the 5 CP Cloud of Darkness since we're only running one, uh, but it's also just great uh, unconditional removal for a lot of different fords that we're going to come up against. Another combination uh, or another package that we're going to talk about is our value package, and that contains the following cards. Cloud of Darkness, 3 CP, Lena, Knight, Gladiator, and the 2 CP unit backup. So Lena is able to bring back knights and porums, which are just uh, terrific value. The knights just playing them by themselves is also very good. They're 2 CP that can get up to 9k power. Gladiator can bring back uh, or can bring back knights and can also bring back vikings so you can get a lot of value out of that and yuna is just vital for playing our summons at a cheaper cost particularly uh, famfret is really high value if you're using a famfret early in the game and you have yuna out you might be able to just tap two backups and play famfret uh, only losing one card from hand where your opponent will surely have played it at least two cards from hand for 3 CP or three cards from hand possibly for 4 CP depending on if uh, how they played out their cards um, so you can really get a lot of value um, by reducing your Famfret to 2 CP uh, and getting that Kukulain and Leviathan down as well. There's also a number of combo pieces in this deck uh, so we'll talk about those. Scholar is a 2 CP backup that returns uh, a forward to your hand and this is very important for Cagnazzo and Nickel as it allows you to play those cards, reduce powers for, uh, forward's power, then bounce them to your hand and play them again to again uh, reduce your opponent's forward's power and you can in this way make a board wipe or a semi board wipe and it's a very very powerful combo. In a pinch you can also use Scholar to bounce Cloud of Darkness and select a card. Uh, since Cloud of Darkness has the text leaves the field, you'll be able to draw a card off of Cloud of Darkness, play it again, and then continue. And this is really good, especially if Cloud of Darkness has removed a card from the game that you really want to draw. You can kind of draw it on demand with Scholar. 
So Ultros is also a kind of a combo card in this deck. Once you have Ultros out and he's able to attack, he does his AoE attack on everybody. And you need to be able to follow this up with Kagnazo or Nickel, or even just Kukulain and Leviathan to ping off enemy forwards. Um, and even if you can't, if you just attack with Ultros and he does his damage, uh, his 3k, 4k, whatever it is to everybody, then you'll be able to attack with your weaker forwards and your opponent won't block because they're just, they won't want to trade into your weak forwards. So some other key cards that we have in this list are Artemisian, and that's just very important to cycle. It's important that we put some cards uh, back into our deck early on. Uh, we want to have some uh, knights and, and porums and uh, summons in the break zone so that we can recur those with Lena and, and Porum, uh, but we don't want to see too many summons, and we also don't want to see things like Lena's too early uh, or Emperor Gestalt's too early. So Artemisian helps us with that. There's also Waka, who is just a water booster for power, and this is really significant because if you play Knight, uh, Knight gains a thousand power per backup. Waka boosts Knight by two thousand because Waka is a backup, and then also boosts Water Forwards by one thousand. So it's a huge boost for Knight. Waka also boosts your Ultros, uh, which is kind of turns them into a 10k beater, and that's really important because you want your Ultros to survive. You don't want your opponents to block your Ultros. You want to be able to attack with him, use his AOE ability, and then follow that up with something else, and not have to worry about your opponent trading into uh, into your Ultros. Although he does have his uh, recur ability um, in a pinch. So I chose to play this deck because. I just love the card draw. It's it's nutty. It's always good to have options. Uh, there's just so many choices to make. It has a really high skill ceiling. Fanfrit pairs so well with Cloud of Darkness, um, as does Scholar if necessary. And the deck is just overall very satisfying to play. It really feels like you're building towards something as you play each game. You're developing uh, different strategies and you have so many different lines that you can take. And I think that some decks can be uh, a little too linear <clears throat> uh, mono wind. Oh, sorry. Uh, and that this deck has just a little more entertainment value to the person that is piloting it. Okay, so that's enough about the deck list. We are going to talk about uh, my games next and uh, how uh, some of those matchups are going. So we're going to enter the segment, Let the Matches Begin. So unfortunately this week I was unable to attend locals as I was chaperoning a school trip. Uh, so instead I played a ton of practice matches with friends and was able to try this deck out against a bunch of different um, matchups. So I'm going to go through four of those right now and uh, we'll talk a little bit about how each one went. The first uh, matchup I played was Mono Fire, and I won almost all of my matches. It was just really easy to gain value and to shut down big forwards uh, with Fanfrit and with other um, other removal. Uh, so it was really hard for Fire to get any sort of advantage with their removal packages because Cloud of Darkness is uh, just getting you value, um, as is a lot of your other forwards, and it just makes it really tricky for Fire to navigate that matchup. Uh, so Cloud of Darkness was a really big one in this in this matchup, and I just things like Emperor Gestal was able to to kill big threats on the fire side of things. The next matchup I played was versus Mono Lightning, and this was a much more even matchup. If Mono Lightning was able to open fast enough, then I was in trouble. And the uh, one of the things that I struggled with was Fanfrit became very bad in this matchup. Mono Lightning has a lot of very good cards that are um, ETP centric, so you have things like Al Cid, uh, Rigdia, Onion Knight, and once they're on the field, they're not that strong, and Mono Lightning is happy to sack them to things like Veritas and Pamphrit, so uh, it makes it a little bit harder to use that. Uh, similarly, uh, I also had a lot of trouble with um, Alua as I couldn't pop the bubble uh, to make her targetable. She has that one-time shield against the first thing she's targeted by. So I had a hard time removing her and uh, if Mono Lightning, they just open fast enough with the Lua and some other Fords and be able to swing for the win. However, if I was able to stabilize, I, it was really hard for them to close out the match and I often won a lot of matches like that. 
One other note is I had a little bit of trouble dealing with Astinian if I didn't have Emperor Gestal ready. Uh, he's hard to deal with uh, w without um, targeted removal, so you have to be ready for him, otherwise he can really turn a matchup up on its head. So I also played against Fire, Water, FF9, and this is a matchup that I mostly won. Uh, it was again like Mono Fire, where I was just outvaluing uh, my opponent, and I was able to get my card draw going where he was not always able to. Um, it was hard for him to use removal, again, because I have so many uh, high value cards. Uh, I also had a lot of ways to clear his small board, so if he had cards like Vivi or Zidane out and he was trying to get um, some, especially some early game advantage with Zidane, uh, Nickel and Cagnazzo were really good for, for picking off those cards uh, and kind of giving me um, a lot of board presence. So the final matchup that I tested against and uh, that was by far the hardest matchup was Mono Wind. Uh, this was again a, a hard matchup to use Famford in as uh, Mono Wind has cards like Zidane, Balthier, and the Maga Sisters that make it really hard uh, f to use Famford because they're happy to sacrifice all of those cards. Uh, so Yishtola also cancels combos like uh, Cagnazzo and Nickel and Ultros and anything like that as well as your summons. Uh, and then Fran, Elhanalem, Yuri, Chalinka all can slay your Laylas and Vikings and your Porums um, without losing any resources. It's all ETBs, uh, so you're getting a forward, you're getting a backup, or it's a, a basically essentially a no-cost action ability. It doesn't lose a card from hand or anything. Uh, or with Yuri, it's just using backup CP. So your opponent's able to clear some of your small forwards. They can blank abilities with Yuri, etc., and gain a lot of value. So I also had trouble with the large boards of Fords uh, because it is hard to assemble a board clear with mono water. So if I wasn't ready to assemble my board clear, you could very quickly get damaged out by just a swarm of wind Fords. And of course, there's always issues with Diabolos. Now, Ultros is pretty good against Diabolos, but uh, it's still a very good card against Cloud of Darkness, uh, against Lena, and it's it's even good against. Um, uh, against Ultros because you can just keep on, uh, on on killing him with Alexander and with Diabolos and I can only recur so many times. So what did work in that matchup when I did win was getting an early Ultros out after setting up very quickly. This was great against Diabolos because they would not have time to get to five backups and to recur like or to get their full value out of Diabolos and then I could just recur my Ultros and uh, be able to uh, wipe early boards with Ultros' ability. Uh, Keg, Nickel also, sorry, Kegnazo and Nickel also came in handy, breaking early Zidane's, uh, as Zidane's at 3,000 power if you have more than two cards in hand. So that was a really easy way to get um, a forward out, kill one of theirs, and then put some pressure on before they can set up. Cloud of Darkness was also a really, sorry, 3 CP Dark Cloud of Darkness was also a really good uh, card in this matchup, allowed me to push for damage uh, and just soak up removal because it's it feels really bad to use a Diabolos combat trick on Cloud of Darkness, um, so that was also a really good matchup, or card for the matchup. Emperor Gestal um, was just key removal for things like Yasmat, so that was a very handy in certain matches. Okay, so we're going to move on to the final segment of the podcast, and that is time for improvements. So I don't have a lot of improvements to talk about. One thing I want to mention is the backup line. So when you play a Mono Water Fusoya, you can play Fusoya as soon as possible and it's going to be a backup that produces CP. However, you can't play Emperor Gestal early because you need to have a target for it. The two Emperor Gestals in the deck basically act as summons. So while you might have 17 backups in a Fusoya list, you actually only have 15 in a Gestal list. So I might need to add an extra backup uh, and some options would be a third Brawn or one Lenora to have that one uh, that uh, 3 CP EX burst searching uh, potential. Uh, 
Uh, I was also thinking about adding uh, some extra powerful forwards and cutting a Layla or a Viking. I believe that Yeso Yehosera has some math on if you should cut a Layla and run three Vikings or if you should run three Laylas and run two Vikings, but uh, some of the cards I was thinking of adding could be Freya to work with uh, all my different power reduction combos. Rosa for some protection against wind, uh, Val 4 and Fina. Titus, the 4 CP, to uh, be able to recur Cloud of Darkness and also uh, my different board wipe combos. And then 4 CP Steiner Legend to draw some cards and get a big body out. I could also add some summons like Kukulain, 4 CP, or even 1 CP Kukulain. So those would be to draw options, uh, but also some removal options. And that's going to be all for this week. Uh, so I just moved this weekend and I'm trying to get some more uh, content out. Uh, so hopefully we can get something uh, something fun out on YouTube soon. Uh, my spoiler dropped today. I'm not sure when this will, will uh, come out. But uh, that was pretty exciting to get a spoiler for this set. Um, so you can read my articles at themacidiapost.com. You can also check me out on YouTube at the uh, So throw me a like on Facebook. A, subs that, a subscription on YouTube. It really helps me out. Uh, and don't forget to check out Cards of Evilies for all your FFTCG needs. And finally, I just have to thank FF Decks for all the hard work that they do. I use their website every single day, and I'm thrilled that now you can get spoilers uh, on FF Decks and put them into your, uh, your lists before the set even drops. I mean, that's amazing. So, thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next time, Missidians.